Alright, so in this video, as the title suggests, we're going to throw Horizon Plus, namely the 2700X, into a B350 motherboard. This will be a really short video. I'm going to talk about the process behind how to do that, not the CPU installation, but uh, how to update your BIOS so that the board will be compatible with Ryzen Plus. And then we're going to see if we can hit the same overclocks on the 2700X that we were able to hit with a pretty boss X470 board from MSI. If you haven't already seen my 2700X review video, I invite you to watch that first by clicking this card right here otherwise we're going to jump right into it first off by updating that uefi the motherboard we're going to use by the way is the msi b350 tomahawk arctic it's a white pcb board i'm using it because i think it looks really good i think it's uh, actually pretty good value for the money and we're going to eventually be comparing this to a different platform that's a video coming up right after this one so stay tuned uh, but for now again let's go ahead and update that uefi so what you're looking at now is the msi b350 board paired with an evga 1070 ti for the win 2 the same card we used to bench mark the 2700X originally, but the CPU in there this time is the 1700X. This is a Summit Ridge CPU, and this is very important because unless you buy the motherboard brand new like today, and even then you might not get the most up-to-date BIOS, you're going to need that up-to-date BIOS in order to boot initially into uh, the new Ryzen Plus CPUs. Out of sheer curiosity, before filming this part of the video, I actually tested the 2700X just straight up in here, uh, raw dogging it without the UEFI update, and all I got was a black screen. So everything looks functional, it's not going to give you any error code or anything like that, but you're not going to get an official post until the UEFI is updated, so just FYI. So the first thing you want to do, navigate to your motherboard vendor's website, in my case it will be MSI, just type in the full name of your motherboard, uh, and then you can navigate from there to the service tab click here and then BIOS it might not be called service by the way it might, it might be called something else uh, but you'll, you'll get the idea to be where all of the software is stored on their website for that given product we of course want the latest BIOS you can see here update uh, AGSA this is good for the new up-and-coming processors so go ahead and download this and then once it saves you're gonna to want to open the folder in which it saved and extract it if you click into the extracted folder you'll find the HC0 file this is the official update here and then we have a text file here just kind of showing the same thing that the website already did now this is where a thumb drive will come in handy you're gonna to want to plug this into your system and then drag that entire folder onto your thumb drive make sure it's still plugged into your PC by the way when you reboot so again, drag the entire folder containing the BIOS into your USB drive, and then you're going to want to restart your system, and then keep spamming delete until you're prompted into your BIOS. Now depending on your vendor, you're going to see an option similar to mFlash, or I think in the case of Gigabyte it's called QFlash, uh, but this will basically reboot your system and enter flash mode for you. There might be a dedicated switch to do this without hopping into your BIOS directly, uh, but you want to click on this, it'll say something flash. Uh, and then your system will reset and then boot and try to look for that BIOS. All right, so you can see you're pretty straightforward. You can see this is our USB drive with the BIOS loaded onto it. And just according to the date here, we know this one, a good old 420. Here is our BIOS. Click it again. Are you sure you want to select this file? Click yes, this is a .hc0 file and your system will update its BIOS. By the way, this process could take a while. It's been here for about three or four minutes now, so don't freak out. Whatever you do though, just as the screen suggests, do not turn your PC off. Let it run the entire time. Otherwise, you'll have a bricked BIOS. You might have to get a new uh, chip or just an entirely new motherboard. And another thing, after it finishes flashing, your PC might reboot more than once. Again, just let it power cycle on its own. I don't know why it says preparing automatic repair, uh, but again, just don't touch anything. Let it correct itself and you should be all right. I think right now it's gonna push me into recovery mode because it, it just reset itself three or four times. Yep, so just click continue. Okay, so it's still showing this and I'm pretty sure the reason why it's doing that is because uh, we updated the BIOS right, so all of our settings internally are reset. I am just going to uh, spam delete until we're pushed into the BIOS instead of Windows because I think it's trying to boot into the wrong drive. I do have a hard drive in here that has nothing but Steam games on it, so that could be the reason why. UEFI hard disk, this is booting into, yep, okay, so this is trying to boot into the, uh, into the HDD, which is not correct. We want the SSD, although I don't see, I don't see the Windows boot manager option. Let us try switching BBS priorities. Should be in this one. That's what we want. Back out again. And there we go. Okay, so now it's going to boot into Windows Boot Manager SSD. There's a difference between that and just booting into the SSD. There are different partitions, so keep that in mind. 
All right, and we're gonna go up here and save it. There we go, no more automatic repair. So again, you might have to reconfigure some initial BIOS settings if you had things set up the way you wanted. Uh, even your fan curves and things, you might have to update again, overclocks, all of that. And we're back in the system, no issues at all. All right, so now the fun part comes up, we're gonna swap CPUs and we're gonna boot directly into the BIOS, make sure everything's being uh, read correctly, and then we will try for that 4.2 gigahertz overclock. That's not good. Probably should have turned off the power supply when I did that. And all right, check that out. So we have a fresh boot into, uh, well, almost our BIOS and we're reading everything correctly. AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, 16 gigs of RAM, our two uh, drives. So awesome, we're gonna press F1 and boot into our BIOS. Uh, we're gonna go into advanced first, click overclock. Again, this will vary from BIOS to BIOS. And then we're gonna go ahead and shoot for 4.2 gigahertz again. There we go. I think I was able to hit 1.38 volts uh, with the 2700X, but in this case, 1.4 is sufficient uh, for 4.2, hopefully. Now, regarding RAM, I'm gonna go ahead and enable XMP. This is something that I was never able to do on a B350 board with the original Ryzen Summit Ridge CPUs. So I'm gonna go full on hardcore here with uh, DDR4 3200 megahertz. These are Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM uh, modules. This is exactly the same ones that we used for the previous video. And this has a default on XP Profile 2 set to 3200 megahertz. So let's just see, I, I doubt this will work on B350, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, so we booted in the operating system without a hitch and I'm pulling up hardware info now to see if our RAM frequency stuck. And sure enough, folks, check it out. You can see right here, it says uh, DDR4 3200. And of course this is double data rate. So 1600 megahertz here on one eight gig dim. And we swap over to the other one and same thing. So it looks like these uh, frequencies are sticking and our, our uh, CP frequency is as well. We're gonna run Prime95 here and see how stable it actually is. All right, let's see here. System is getting pretty loud, uh, but looks like it's looks like it's stable at 4.2 gigahertz and one point. Oh no, it locked up there. Okay, so yeah, system's frozen. Let's go ahead and power cycle. I'm gonna probably bump the voltage up to like 1.425, which is about as high as I'm comfortable with long term and uh, let's see if it's any more stable. All right, let's give it one more shot this time. Again, I'm gonna monitor package temps up top. Hardware monitor does not have support yet for full on per core temperature readings, uh, but we'll, we'll at least get you know a rough estimate of what our package temps will be like with Prime95. Something else to stress, this is like an absolute worst case torture test. So even if it doesn't pass this per se, it could still be quote unquote stable, you know, with most uh, workloads and it froze up again. So. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one a no-go at 4.2. Just to be on the safe side, uh, we're gonna clock it down to 4.1 gigahertz, which will allow us to drop voltage significantly, and then uh, we'll give this one more go. All right, so here we go this time at 4.1 gigahertz and 1.35 volts, which is probably higher than I needed, but I wanna make sure things are stable when we run this test. And here we go. I'm gonna keep moving the window around just to make sure things aren't locking up. And, you know, if it can pass 30 seconds of Prime 95, like I'd call that pretty darn stable. Things are looking great. Package temps are approaching 80C, which is on the upper limit for sure. This is a 360 mil AIO from Deepcool here, not the highest TDP or the strongest pump, but things are looking pretty stable. Temperatures aren't too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one here. It's still not locking up. Yeah, I'm gonna call this one a pass. Uh, you know, I, I doubt any workload most people pursue anyway would be anywhere near prime 95 torture workload capacity so this is uh this is great this is great news so yeah still not locking up here 4.1 gigahertz 1.35 volts on a b350 motherboard with a ryzen 7 2700x you can see package temps are getting pretty high still despite being at only 1.35 volts 84 degrees c according to hardware monitor uh, but the system is not locking up and that's that's really good news so if you have a b350 board or maybe you just want to buy a cheaper board and, and not want to go all out with the x470 stuff then you can certainly do that as long as it comes with the most up-to-date BIOS supporting uh, Pinnacle Ridge and you should be good to go. So there you have it folks. A few things you should take away from this video. Yes, you can run Verizon Plus on a B350 board. I don't think that was news to anybody, but what I was more or less concerned about was how stable things would be uh, if I could reach the same overclock as I could on an X470 board. The answer to that, at least for the CPU is no. I had to drop the frequency by 100 megahertz. I probably could have dropped it by 50 and kind of incrementally worked my way to a certain threshold. Uh, but I, I'm comfortable at 4.1. Like it's only a, a 100 megahertz deviation from the, the high end stuff, right? It's gonna 
to cost maybe $100 more. And on top of that, we still comfortably hit our uh, XMP timings here and frequency uh, for our RAM at 3200 megahertz, which is a huge improvement over the original Ryzen stuff on the B350 platform. Now a downside to using B350, of course, this is not gonna be the most stable motherboard out there in terms of power delivery. Uh, so your VRMs might get pretty hot on a CPU like this, depending on what frequency you get it to. Although Pinnacle Ridge, in terms of power draw, is not too, too different from Summit Ridge, and that's great news. Uh, again, though, you're gonna lose a few other features when you resort to B350 over X370 or X470. Uh, but this, this is good stuff, right? So you can find this motherboard linked below along with a CPU and a few other B350 boards that I've tested that I would recommend for this particular thing. Also, remember to keep in mind that you can't just buy one of these motherboards from a site like Amazon or Newegg without triple checking that the latest BIOS is on the board because unless you have a Ryzen 1 CPU uh, with which to flash a BIOS, unless you're using like a key flash software that doesn't require a CPU, you're gonna have just a board that won't work with the CPU out of the box. So just something else to keep in mind, it's another hurdle, but again, you know, if you're upgrading or if you get uh, the motherboard with the newest BIOS already installed, then you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. If you like this video, be sure to let me know, give us one a thumbs up, I appreciate it, thumbs down, for the opposite, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.